Welcome back to our second video in what I'm calling possibly the video that was evidence in my trial against Gaz, Gaz for molestation, uh, or, you ready for this? The January Transfer Spectacular. Mm. Oh, I like that one. Anybody like that? Rolls off yeah? the song. Yeah? Guys have a, no one? No. Okay, no. right, the January Transfer Spectacular part two begins now. We're talking about midfielders, obviously. We've got a lot of them. Dave, how do we fit them all in? Carrick holding. Yeah. Di Maria on the left-hand side of a central midfield three and Herrera yeah. on the right. Right, no matter, no blind, lots of other players. No Anderson. No controversial. <laughs> no. Okay, you. I'd agree with that three, um, yeah. to be honest. I, might, I would probably play a diamond as well, possibly, but the main central three would be, because if you play a diamond, you've got Rooney probably in the hole and all that. Yeah. But I'd play Di Maria, Herrera and Carrick as well. Go on. Louis van Gaal, we, we, we know before he came, he was like the expert with a 4-3-3. I think we can play a 4-3-3. Carrick as your older midfielder. Rooney and Herrera as your two central midfielders. Mm -hmm. Matter on the one wing and Di Maria on the other wing. If we're lacking pace with Matter on that wing, you can always bring him up, put a play like Valencia there. Even not, young. Not to talk about Matter. You're the only person to tell us he's in your team. Dave, tell us about Matter. Should he be playing, should he not be playing? So I think open play, Juan Matter, in terms of his creativity, it isn't quite there. In terms of, you know, you're looking at other players in world football, you like, so Luka Modric, Tony Cruz. Juan Matter's got 34 assists since joining Chelsea in the Premier League, including his time at Man United. 11 have come from set pieces. Mm. So he's, looking, he's creating things from set plays, from corners, from free kicks. So potentially isn't the player that you want to be you know, building the play up, but he is a talented individual. Is he good enough at set pieces to be getting in the side on that alone? Potentially, like Gaz mentioned, on the wings, potentially, I'd say. And that's where one matter could fit in. I think he's too slow for being out there. There's a lot of time where people will just nick the ball off his toe from coming in from behind him or muscle him off the ball. I David think Beckham, too he's slow. He's too slow for yeah. that. Now, nah, but David Beckham had the extra yard in his head, didn't it? One matter hasn't got the strength if someone's coming behind him to, like, hold them off the ball. And a lot of the time, if you look at this season, a few of the times against Leicester, I can remember it, a few of the times, one matter's lost the ball centrally, we've conceded. Well, he's a little guy, isn't he? Very skillful though, good feet. Um, I mean, I think he'd make it as a footballer. I like uh, that. Let's <laughs> talk about, um, if you look at Manchester United and the history of the club, first name that comes to mind in terms of leaders on the pitch, Roy Keane. Yes. Never replaced Roy Keane. Media was always saying we needed to. Do we need or do we lack a leader in the middle of the pitch? Yes. One, I don't think we need one anymore, I'd say. Ooh. I think oh, your, leader, your leader's at centre-back now. Uh, your ball players are at central midfield. <coughs> your Carricks, your Chavis those players that dominate the play and they become yeah. the leaders because they do it with the ball. They may not be as vocal as they used to be, but they do it with the ball and they move it around and that's what you need. Centre back, yeah, have a leader, have someone that screams at you, someone goes crazy, but I think yeah. central midfield is... I, I meant it in a different way than that. I think I meant by the terms of someone to impose themselves on a game, stick their foot on the ball and say to their players, all right lads, we're going to start, you know, get it ticking because we haven't got somebody there that when times are going, <laughs> like against Southampton the other day, it was very slow, very turgid at times. We needed someone to like, you know, get them going, get the lads going from that central midfield area, like Roy Keane would do, like Brian Robson would do. What's Rooney's like job? Yeah, what, exactly. What's he doing in there? He's not doing that. He's, for my opinion, Wayne Rooney, if you've got Wayne Rooney and one matter so deep as your central midfield, <clears> then what was the point buying Herrera? What was the point, you know, buying Daly Blind? What was the point buying Di Maria even, if you're going to stick him up front? Because Wayne Rooney, yes, he can work in the central, probably central midfield three, but if he's in your central midfield with one matter, he on a hide into nothing. One Yama and Schneiderlin had a field day. I think you, what, what we're missing here is Wayne Rooney's a striker and that's what he is. Like you're mm. saying, he's not a midfielder. Against Southampton in, in the first 30 minutes, he completed 63% of his passes. That's mm. poor. Mm. Your centre mid is usually hitting mm. your 80s, your high 80s, your 90s. It was also yeah, really bad terrible. against Yeovil, wasn't it? It, was, it, was yeah, it mm. just didn't, didn't dictate the play, like we're saying. Not what he becomes a, a clogger. He forgets his footballing instinct so much. Yes, he can play a lot of Hollywood balls and all that, but then he just gets, you can tell he gets frustrated and he just starts little flicks. Mm. We're saying this. Can we not say Hollywood ball? What? Because that just, just say a long springs, pass it springs Steven Gerrard to mind when someone says that, doesn't it? Hollywood say, ball. Does it? Yeah, that's what, that's that's what, what he's, he's going for. Think of, <laughs> <laughs> think of like, one of his I just think of like a celebrity <laughs> party. It's a Hollywood <laughs> ball. Everyone in like tuxes. I just don't think he has any place <laughs> in football. No need for it. Okay, right. Let's talk about Manchester United and their history with wingers. We haven't really got a lot of width this season and nope. we don't have a lot of space for traditional wingers. In a minute, we'll talk about the likes of Adnan Yanazai not getting in the side. Adnan wingers. Is not a winger. The formation yeah. needs to change. <laughs> the f no, you're right. The formation needs to change, man. It's, it's getting frustrating now, I think. I mean, I know that people will say, like, oh, well, yesterday was our first loss in ages, but look at the way we've played. And you, you just think, I mean, in certain games, it feels like as soon as we changed it, we started playing better. Even the Yeovil game, 
is a good example. And I just it just needs to change, man. We need to start. We can play wingers. We can play a 4-3-3. Like I mentioned, Van Gaal is famous for a 4-3-3. What are you laughing at? <laughs> what are you laughing <laughs> at? Nothing. Guys, uh, we got, I mean, we've got to think about it. I'm going to stop your flirting there just to like put in. Do you think when Rooney went up front yesterday, Yeah. The team seemed to take more of an urgency to get the ball into the box. But that's also because because Southampton yes, stepped back a bit, like, though, wasn't it? You know? when, when Wayne Rooney was in more more um, central in the midfield, we didn't have that urgency to get the right. ball into the box for a striker like Rooney. He just wants to get his head on. Okay, I think we can agree we want more width. Let's talk about Andani Anzai. Why can't he get in the team? He wasn't even on the bench against Southampton. Dave, I suspect you've got some actual facts, not nonsense. Tell us them. So in in terms of flanks, Man United, in terms of cramp, chance creation there pretty poor, like sort of top, bottom five in the Premier League, looking wow. at both sides, which is poor. Valencia, he's created seven chances from the right-hand side. That's the most of any Man United player. That's, that's tiny. Di Maria, that's hardly featured this season, sort of creative on the left-hand side. And I think that's where we need to potentially, you know, get him involved there with another wide player. And that's where we can yeah. sort of create some chances, I think. Okay, so you want more width? What? Definitely more width. All right, well, that's agreed. We all Love want a width. bit of width. Love. More Gaz's width. favourite thing, Love a bit of width. width. Don't talk about girth, though. You're <laughs> getting wet tied. <laughs> right, Yanazai. Why is he not getting on the bench? He's not good team. enough yet. Not, but no, how's no, he no. going to get there if you don't play him? I think, you think, you think, oh, I think David, he's good enough, but I think there's obviously something going on there, whether it's his training or his character or whatever. Um, obviously, I think he's had a few injuries this, this season as well, but Louis van Gaal obviously doesn't fancy him for some reason. Adam, um, quick to question Yanazai's character there. No, he, what do you know? Why else wouldn't he play? Classic case of Why well, is he playing when he's fit? And is he good enough? Oh, he's exactly. Good enough. Is, is, is he actually I good think enough he is at good this enough. minute? We, we saw people say, we've seen people recently saying we want Herrera to get a game of six runs. If you remember around just before Christmas, Yanazai yeah. got that run of games yeah, yeah. and he didn't perform. Exactly. So he had his chance. Exactly. I'd argue that there were some of the times we played left midfield, he was really good with Shaw. Their, their link-up play was brilliant. Yeah, at that time. And, and I don't think he's had the chance this year. He hasn't had enough minutes. He's been injured. He's, when Yanazai was in the team last season, when he had that consistent run, he was really good. He was our best player, but you know, he carried us for about four or five games. Yeah, we were very crap. We, were, we weren't good, but then this season we're not performing. And mm. to, to get Yanazai out on the flanks, you know, he's a winger. He'll come inside. He'll go outside. He, he's tricky, isn't he? He's, one, he's someone that you want in your team. He's a threat. He's going to draw players in, and that's going to open the space in the middle. Had, if we had all our players fit and we could play a back four, because obviously we've been playing with wing backs. Yanazai is never going to be a yeah. wing back. Do you think if we played with a tr traditional back four, Yanazai may have been included a bit more? Definitely. I think that's a big problem for Yanazai, yeah. that he was thrown in at wing back, he was thrown in at central midfield. It seems that the system that Van Hal has Tried to it, it has sort of getting Yanazai in the wrong position. Like centre midfield, yeah. Yanazai? No way. Work, it's it? no way. He's a winger. He is, for me, he's a winger. I feel he can play in that number 10. I think he'll blossom maybe when he gets to He's not necessarily that fast, he is he, 10. Yanazai? He's not like He's faster than Matter, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> But is that, that sounded really harsh what I said then when I said he's not good enough. He, I okay. do think he's going to be a very good player. I think we could do with sending mm. him out on loan. Headline, Gaz hates Yanazai. You still hate Robin Van Persie, presumably. Uh, <laughs> right, me, me and Robin are talk, right with I mean, Ill children. He hates them all. Yeah. Let's talk about another player at Manchester United, Di Maria. Where's his best position? Where do you want him playing every game? I think an answer to this width problem could be if we're not going to play the back three, uh, sorry, the back four, fair enough, then as a... As, um, as Dave suggested, yep. stick him in the central midfield where he can get wide and push wide from that position. We played him in the type of Robin role um, for Holland in, against Southampton. And whilst when we did get the ball to him, he looked dangerous and he looked like he could make things happen. The problem was we couldn't, we didn't give him the service, we didn't give him the, the right balls, anything. Um, so, you know, I think that could be a role for him to get some width into our play yeah. and to get the best out of Di Maria. Against Southampton, he didn't touch the ball for the first seven minutes and then in the first half I think he touched the ball six times. Wow. So it's one of those things where up front he's not involved. He needs to be a central midfield. I said before on one of the previous shows we should put him wide left. So don't, don't think that's the right option anymore. I think you need a central midfield. You need to get him on the ball, let him create things, let him just have, have a few shots, whatever. Remember Ronaldo back in the day? Yeah. He just used to shoot and you know yeah. he missed the target but he's getting into the game. That's I don't what know. Di Maria I, I still like the idea of putting a Di Maria type player on the wing, sort of like a classic Giggs type player. Just because, I mean, Van Persie and Falcao have got stick this time, at uh, times this season. Obviously, Van Persie from me and Falcao from a lot of others. Yeah. And you just feel yeah. like maybe if we had two, well, one class winger down that side yeah. playing imperfect balls for them, then we wouldn't be slagging them off as much as we were. We finish our midfielders part with talk of who we should buy. Dave, who would you like to see Manchester United buy in the midfield? Do we need anyone? Like one player that I. Still do think we potentially need, we don't have the answer to our ball playing midfield. I don't think we have that player that's going to carry us. Herrera could potentially be, blossom into that. 
Kovacic would have been a great one from Inter Milan. Bad thing with him is he's just signed a new deal, but if you're looking at his stats, they're unbelievable in terms of a player under 21 in Europe. Yeah. He's got the completed the most passes. Only Raheem Sterling has created more chances and completed more take-ons on him. He's just a player that's brilliant. He's very he's sort of short. He did get a holiday skulls. too. He did, yeah. He's <laughs> off, but you know, he's one player that could really sort of dictate our midfield for the next five years, but now he's signed a new deal. Okay. Adam. Who, who would I want? Yeah. Um, I think we, there's obviously an opportunity for us there to get Strootman. Um, I don't think we should necessarily go all guns blazing for him this window if, is, if there are questions over his fitness. But I think someone like Strootman alongside Herrera could provide us with the right balance in the central midfield to someone that's strong, can dominate from there, um, is a presence and can play football as well. But also Herrera who can then buzz around them and get, get it going because I felt we've missed that link between our defence and our attack, as, of, as I mentioned earlier. I don't, I don't think we need to go spending a lot of money on a midfielder. I don't think that's a, a, a desperate thing for us to do in January. Yeah. But if we were to get one, I'd just like a nasty, hard... To just Bastard kick everyone <laughs> in the middle of the pitch. <laughs> yeah, nice. So Fellaini? Uh, no, because <laughs> Fellaini, cause Fellaini is all elbows. Flat. Yeah, he's not, he's not. Lee Catamon. No, someone who's good at football, Sam. <laughs> right. <laughs> Steven Gerrard's available. That is the end <laughs> of part Imagine two that. of the January Transfer Spectacular. That's what I called it. Uh, part you three coming up when we're talking about attackers. It's probably on your screen right now. Isn't technology wonderful? Comparatively, I'm talking the massive clubs, your traditional powerhouses. How good is our attack, Dave?